Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle with a quick look at the Gordon Growth Model, which is the simplest version among the set of discounted dividend valuation models. So those are models where we use the dividend to infer the price of the stock. Here's the Gordon Growth function, and right away you can see the advantage of Gordon Growth is how simple it is. We infer the price given only three variables. Now this is also its disadvantage. In order to get this simple function, we had to assume that the dividends grow in a constant rate forever. That math I'll show on the website. If you'd like to take a look, it's pretty instructive how we reduced the infinite series into something elegant like this, but it gives rise here to the, the disadvantage, and that is this answer here for the stock is highly sensitive to both the discount rate and the growth assumption in the dividends. But no, nevertheless, let's apply it here with some assumptions and we start with the required rate of return. If you do look at the spreadsheet, you'll see there that I'm actually making use of the capital asset pricing model. So the required rate of return is a function of a risk-free rate, a beta and a market risk premium. Now I'm not going to go into the detail here. Rather, I'm just going to assume that the required rate of return is 9%. My input assumptions as usual are in yellow. So that 9% here corresponds to the R, and we can fairly call that a discount rate here. And then I have another assumption that the current dividend is $1. And notice my notation D0, the zero meaning current or immediately today. Then I have another assumption, the expected dividend growth. So that's growth in the dividend of 6%. That corresponds to the G. So I can calculate the next dividend, and it's going to be the dollar growing at 6%. Nothing fancy here, just discrete annual compounding. $1 grows to $1.06. So the 106, notice the notation is D1, so that corresponds to the numerator. And so now I can apply the Gordon growth model and compute the price. Here's the formula. In the numerator, I have the D3, cell D13 was $1.06. So that's the next dividend, not the current dividend, divided by or capitalized by the discount rate R, in this case, that's 9%, minus the expected growth in the dividends of 6%. And remember, part of our assumption here, our dubious assumption, is that this dividend of $1 today, $1 $1.06 at the end of the year is going to continue to grow at 6% in an infinite series. That's the unrealistic assumption. Having done that, I compute a stock price of $35.33. So the Gordon, that's the typical application of the Gordon growth model. But because we have a function here in four variables, we can solve for any of the four as a function of the other three. So that's just what I quickly wanted to show you, and that is right here next, the idea that we would solve for the implied dividend growth. And if I put the formula over here, if you'd like to just see the derivation, I just take the same Gordon growth model that I just looked at, multiply the R minus G on both sides, I end up with this, and then solve for G, the growth rate is right here, and that reduces to R minus what I'm going to call the dividend yield D1 divided by the stock price. And so that is illustrated right here. Given a stock price, see how this time I'm not solving for the stock price. I'm going to use it as an input. So if I observe a stock price in the market and a dividend and I have the discount rate, then this time I'm going to use Gordon growth to solve for the implied dividend growth. So in this case, the stock price is 35.33, and again, this would be the price that I observe. The next dividend I know is going to be a dollar six, but this time it's an input. My dividend yield then is 106 divided by the 35.33, and so I have a dividend yield of three percent, and then my required rate of return is still nine percent. And this time, I use the Gordon growth to solve for the implied growth of the dividends. And I get 6% because it's just my 9% discount rate minus my 
forward dividend yield of 3%. See, in this case, I only had the information about the next dividend, 106. So in other words, if I paid this amount for the stock, and this is the next dividend, and I have this rate required rate of return, then if I paid a fair price, it's implying that the growth on the dividend needs to be 6% infinitely. And finally, I can get given as inputs the stock, the dividend, and the growth expectation, I can infer what the expected rate of return is. So now I put that formula over here. See, I have the Gordon growth here. And this time I'm solving for the discount rate or required rate of return. And it's going to be the forward dividend yield plus the growth rate. So now I observe a stock price of 35.33. Same numbers just to show that it's internally consistent. The next dividend I observe or predict will be a dollar six. So my forward dividend yield is this divided by this or 3%. And now I expect, again as an input, the dividend will grow at 6%. So then the question is, if I pay this for the stock price, what is the expected rate of return? And in this case, I can just add the dividend growth plus the forward dividend yield to get the 9%. So this is a way to use the stock price that I observe to infer what the uh, rate of return that I'm getting, assuming that the dividend grows at this rate. So three ways to use the Gordon Growth Model. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.